Proverbs chapter number 4. The book of Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs is the great verse book on wisdom and especially for young men. Uh, but it's for everybody. Proverbs chapter 4. We'll look at verse number 7. And this always, verse has always meant a lot to me. Let's do just a little quick study of this verse here tonight. I'll give you uh, three thoughts and uh, I'll be done. I'm not going to be long at all. You'll be surprised how, how brief I am tonight because I just got a thought and I'm going to give it to you. Proverbs chapter 4, verse number 7. Wisdom is the principal thing. The number one main thing for you to care about, kids. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. Now, if the Bible says that, you better be figuring out how to get it. If God said that's the main thing you're supposed to get, you better figure out how to get it. Get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. Exalt her wisdom. And she, wisdom, shall promote thee. She shall bring thee to honor when thou dost embrace her. I want to preach on that tonight. Wisdom, the best thing, or the principal thing. Now, I have to introduce the message tonight by saying I've had people ask me, what is the difference between knowledge and wisdom? And uh, knowledge is stored up facts and information. Knowledge is knowing stuff. Uh, wisdom is the right use of that knowledge. Well, knowledge is knowing about stuff. Wisdom is knowing how to use it. In other words, you can have a lot of knowledge and no wisdom, and you can be a dangerous person. As uh, one, one man said, uh, he said, uh, I, I wish uh, I'd be happier if, if our leaders had less brains and more wisdom. That, that might be a good idea if they had uh, more of the fear of God and more wisdom instead of just a bunch of knowledge. I'll illustrate it like this. Um, uh, knowledge would be this guitar. Uh, wisdom is knowing how to play it. See, if you don't, you just... You ever heard somebody try to play it? It can get on your nerves. Uh, somebody just banging around on get that cat and do it like... See, the, the wisdom is knowing how to use the guitar. A chainsaw is a tool. A chainsaw is a tool. That's knowledge. Wisdom is knowing how to start it and cut a tree down. You can do a lot of damage with a chainsaw if you don't know how to use it. If you don't have the, the wisdom to use the tool, you can hurt somebody else bad, tear up something, or yourself, cut your leg off, your foot off, just like that with a chainsaw. So you understand the difference. Wisdom is knowing how to use the saw. Knowledge would be the saw, the blade, the cut. It's got a lot of sharp blade on it, that's knowledge. Wisdom is knowing how to use it to make something happen that, that's good and right. Now with that thought in mind tonight, let me give you three thoughts. I want you to keep your Bible open. We're going to turn to three verses. Number one, wisdom is better than military power. Turn in your Bible to Ecclesiastes. This is another wisdom book. Over to your right there, just a little ways, is Ecclesiastes. Uh, after Proverbs, uh, you have uh, Ecclesiastes. And look at chapter number 9. Ecclesiastes chapter number 9. And look with me at verse number 18. An amazing, amazing verse of Scripture. The Bible said in Ecclesiastes 9, 18. You got it? You there yet? Look at it. Wisdom is better than weapons of war. But one sinner destroyeth much good. Wisdom is better than weapons of of war, wisdom, and the not right use of not, not, uh, knowing how to use your your uh, being able to use your knowledge right is better than tanks and guns and missiles and rockets and bombs. The Bible said you're better off to have wisdom than weapons of war. So wisdom is better. You remember the verse I read? Better to get wisdom. Wisdom is better than military power. Oh, uh, they said years ago. When uh, President McKinley uh, took office many years ago, uh, many of our early day presidents a long time ago were really, really God-fearing, Bible-believing people. And they, they uh, made a statement, and President McKinley said, Give me wisdom 
and knowledge. He told the Lord this. He said, give me wisdom and knowledge that I may know how to go out and come in before these people. He told the preacher, he said, I hope I shall have your sympathy and prayers of all you good people. He said, I want you people to pray for me that God would give me wisdom. It wasn't like, uh, we'll go over to this party and you give me enough money, I'll get your votes and I'll get enough money raised over here and I'll get your votes and I'll stay in power. No, it was God give me wisdom to know how to make the right decision for this company. Have you ever heard of the famous six-day war uh, back down in 1967? Uh, involving Israel and all the, the countries that were surrounding them. It was like one little bitty spot. You take Israel, the preacher mentioned this morning, a little spot on the map like that, and you had Sudan, and Iraq, and Iran, and all these countries around it, and they were all ganging up Egypt, with all ganging up on Israel, and there was a time, brother, this has happened down through the centuries, that God, uh, God's earthly people, Israel, and still are, by the way, still are, uh, was in a jam. And, and the, the history said, you can read the story, uh, you read a, 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 the right, the truth Christian story about it, uh, that those Jews were in, the, in, in Israel, and they didn't know what to do. They were surrounded like, I don't know what the odds were, 100 to 1 or something like that. Uh, just unbelievable uh, amount of odds. And they said that they made the decision to attack and they flew them military jets out of Israel and down in, I think, northern Egypt or somewhere and bombed those places, and they said they flew them at the exact right moment when, that, uh, when they was doing something or taking a break or on doing They wasn't prepared for it, and they said if they'd done it earlier, it wouldn't have worked. If they'd have done it later, it wouldn't have worked. But Israel come out victorious in the famous Six-Day War in 1967. I think it was June 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, or 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th. I think it was start on July, June or July, the the 5th, and it's called the Six-Day War. And they said there was no way that they could have won. But the verse said, their Jewish Old Testament said that wisdom is better than weapons of war. Uh, Listen, brother, we're short on it in our generation. We're living in a generation that puts all the emphasis on get an education, get an education, get an education, get an education. And you know how I believe about that. We don't need to go through all that again. There's nothing wrong with education. You ought to get all you can. You ought to do the best you can do in school. I get, a, I get lied on about stuff like that. Brother Danny, don't believe me. Well, you, you just li- ain't listening. Uh, you ought to get all you can, can all you get, and, and, and store it up and live, do the best you can. Nothing wrong with getting a good education, making a good living. That's all fine and well, but education without salvation is damnation. And any education that's against the Bible is of the devil. It's not of God. It's not right. And brother, it's not, that's not going to give you godly wisdom. You hear me? It's not going to do it. Like that kid said one time, uh, the teacher asked the kid, they said, uh, son, what is the definition of a vacuum? What is a vacuum? He said, well, I, I don't really know how to put it in words, but I got it up here. Like that. Uh, and, that's the way, uh, and that's the way so many of our, of our kids are now. You heard the story where the, uh, I don't know if I get this story right or not. I just heard it. Uh, the preacher was telling it. Something like, uh, this guy was going to give these, these girls um, a, a prize if they made up 100 steps or something like that. You had to go up 100 steps, and you, you had to tell them a joke for every step. And if they, and if they laughed, they, they was out, out of the game. So he had a blonde, a brunette, a brunette. Uh, uh, um, I've seen some of them. There were some purplets here this morning, uh, but uh, I, and, uh, and uh, pinkettes and all kinds of. But anyway, blonde, brunette, um, black-haired lady, and uh, blackhead just don't sound right. Uh, but anyway, they, they had these steps, and you tell them a joke, and if they laughed, they was out. So they told one, told one, told one, told one, told one. Finally, about on the 15th one, the brunette went, (laughs) so you're out, you're out. And and they they told nothing, told nothing, told nothing. Black-headed girl, blonde-headed girl, they was on up about uh, 30 or 40. Neither one of them laughed, neither one of them laughed. And uh, uh, they they said, uh, finally they said, uh, uh, she went, (laughs) you're out. That just left the blonde. Go up to 99. 99, at 100, they get a big reward. And on the 99th joke, she went, <laughs> started laughing. They said, why'd you laugh now? And she said, I just got the first one. 
That's, that's, uh, that, that reminds me of our generation without wisdom. Amen? That's right. I, I, I like that one that said there's two blondes walking down the road, and one of them said, look at that dog with one eye, and the other one went. Oh, yeah, that's, uh, that's our generation. Uh, a lot of education and no wisdom. Amen? Uh, I really liked one. I ain't going to get off on all that. But I, I had a bunch of them, but I really liked one with a girl sitting there, and she's trying to set, put this puzzle together. And she calls her boyfriend, and she said, you've got to come over and help me get this puzzle together. She, and he said, well, just, just work on it. And she said, I'll help. It's all laying out here. I can't get one piece to fit. And he said, uh, well, look, look at the picture on the box. Go by the picture on the box and, and just put it together. She said, it is. And she said, he said, what is it? He said, this is a big rooster on a farm. And, and, and he went over there. And finally, she said, come over here and help me. And he finally walks in, he looked down at her, and she's sitting there about to pull her hair out. And he said, you idiot, put them cornflakes back in that box. Uh, it's like that. That's the generation that you and I are living in. Amen. That's right. Uh, the, the Bible said that wisdom is better. Listen, we're living in a dumb generation, brother. I kid you not. I mean, they know how to move them thumbs. Lord, they got the best acting thumbs of any generation in history. Brrr, them thumbs go 90 miles an hour, but ain't got a lick of sense, as the old folks say. And so wisdom is better than military power. Now, I'm going to say secondly tonight, take your Bible and turn to Proverbs chapter 16. Turn to Proverbs chapter 16, back a little ways there. And let's look at the second thought here this evening. I said number one, uh, wisdom is better than military power. And God knows our country needs wisdom tonight. Pray for our leaders. Pray for our government. Pray for our president. Pray for our military leaders, the Army, the Navy, the Marines, all of them. Pray for them that God would give them enough sense to know what to do in this terrible time that we live in. Then look in Proverbs chapter 16 and uh, look at verse number 16. And I want to say this. Wisdom is better than monetary power. Wisdom is better than monetary power. Look at 1616. How much better, there's that word again, better is it to get wisdom than gold? Ain't many people believe that. Ain't many people believe that. You're better off to get wisdom than gold. Like a lot of money and no sense. You know, there's one thing I always said I want to ask the Lord when I get to heaven is why the crazy people had the money. But I guess we won't worry about it then. But did you know the Bible said, uh, uh, 1616, 16, how much better is it to get wisdom than gold? Now, that this right here is the book of wisdom. You want to get wisdom? Stick your nose in this book right here. You kids, all you young people, I challenge you, read Proverbs. Read Proverbs all the time. You can read one chapter in Proverbs and read it 12 times a year. One a day and read it 12 times a year, once a month. Only one chapter a day. And this book right here is wisdom. I, re I heard where these two banks was exchanging money. You know how banks do sometimes? And they were going to transport big, big, big banks, like New York somewhere. And they were transporting a bunch of money like from maybe Fort Knox to the banks or back and forth, something like that. And they said they had these big trucks, you know, them big, them big uh, armored trucks like Wells Fargo and stuff, $7 billion they were moving. $7 billion. That's a lot of money. A billion is a thousand million. We hear it quoted on TV so much we don't think nothing about it. But if you had a million dollars, you know, somebody say he's a millionaire, he's got two million, he's got three million, you have a thousand million is one billion. And they had seven billion. That's seven thousand million dollars. That's enough for us to make it a while. Amen. Uh, seven billion dollars moving it from one bank to the other. And they had armored guards and, and soldiers and cops and an uh, escort like you would not believe, buddy. They was, they was guarding that stuff. Now the, now the Bible says that wisdom is better than gold. What it ought to be, if, if a Bible is laying in here, people ought to be after it like there's after that $7 million billion in them trucks. Man, you ought to have to have armed guards around that thing. Keep it. But people don't know that. People don't realize it. They don't realize that that, that that, when it comes right down to it, is more important 
than all the gold in the world. Listen, people, I know you kids, sometimes you're sitting here tonight and you're thinking, well, how long is this going to last? Well, what's he going to preach about? Let me tell you something, buddy. You listen to me. The day's going to come. The day's going to come when what we're talking about here tonight and what we're doing here this evening will be all that matters when you're getting ready to check out and leave this world. The other day uh, when, uh, when that, that, that helicopter crashed, when Kobe Bryant uh, got killed, and uh, that was a sad, sad thing. Sad thing. I, my heart, I felt so sorry for his wife and, and those, other, those other kids. How sad and terrible that was. And, and everywhere I went this week, people were talking about it. And I believe, I believe the Lord used it to get a hold of some of them guys. I, I think some of them got, un, got, got to shook up a little bit. I was in old Charles Barkley's evening. Shaq was crying and all them guys. And I said, hallelujah. I prayed God use this, use this bad situation. Maybe get some guys' eyes open and get them saved. I don't, I don't know uh, about the situation with Kobe. I've had people send me stuff. They said he was a Catholic and he did believe in Jesus. And he talked about carrying his cross. And I, I hope and pray to God I'm not to judge him at all, at all. May God have mercy on his family and may God have mercy on them. But I'm going to tell you, I'm just going to use this for a point. I'm just for a point. He said he's worth $600 million. And I'm telling you that night, that, that morning when that helicopter was going down. Are you listening to me? You listen, kids, that helicopter is going down. That money didn't mean one thing. That fame did not mean one thing. Not one thing. And I'm not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not happy about that. It's terrible. It's awful. I hate that happened. I'm simply using an illustration. It wouldn't have mattered if you'd have had $5 or $500 million. When it comes your time to leave this world, wisdom is better than gold. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It sure is. Old Cecil Rhodes on land and in Africa. And when he when he died, when he's getting ready to die, he said, I have diamonds, I have gold, and I have land. He said, I must leave it all. I actually have nothing. Andrew Carnegie. The famous millionaire said, wealth takes the smiles away. Wealth takes the smiles away. Nothing wrong with money. If God blesses you with a lot of money, I'll be happy for you. Praise God. Hallelujah. There's nothing, there's nothing sinful about it. But wisdom is better. I'd rather know that I know that I know where I'm going when I leave here and not have 15 cents in my pocket than to own the bank mortgage and die without God. Wisdom is better than gold. Job 28 and verse 18 said the price of wisdom is above rubies. Proverbs 8 and verse 11 said wisdom is better than rubies. All things that thou canst cannot be compared to her. Better is it to get wisdom than gold. They said uh, when the Titanic was sinking, you hear all kinds of stories about that. They said one guy... Uh, left had a treasure chest that had money in it and it was, everybody was grabbing stuff and screaming and hollering and jumping on lifeboats and, and, and screaming to the top of their lungs. It wasn't like music playing all romantic like the movie. I mean, that was a nightmare, brother. It's freezing cold and people screaming and hollering and cussing and begging to God, crying out to God. And they said a guy uh, left that treasure in that thing and picked up three oranges and took them with him. Is there going to come a time when three oranges mean more to you than a treasure, a chest full of money. Listen, buddy, you can't eat money. You can't eat it. And when it fails and you have no appetite and you're dying with cancer, money can't help you. Wisdom is better than monetary power. Number three, and I'm through. Go back to Ecclesiastes chapter one one more time. We'll be done. Ecclesiastes chapter number one. I said first, wisdom is better than military power. I said second, wisdom is better than monetary power. Finally, uh, Ecclesiastes chapter one, verse 13, wisdom is better than mental power. Look at verse 13. And I gave my heart to seek and to search out by wisdom concerning all things that are done under heaven. This is sore travail hath God given to the sons of man 
to be exercised therewith. He said it's better off to have wisdom than just mental power. Experience is not what happens to you. People say, well, I have a lot of experience. Experience ain't what happens to you. It's what you do with what happens to you. You learn anything. Uh, are you smarter? Are you better? Are you more holy? Our generation says just believe in yourself. Just believe in I get so sick of hearing that. I, I guess I just drive me crazy when I hear all these people tell their kids, John, hey, you can do it. You can do it. You're the greatest, honey. You can do it. You're the most beautiful. You're the most. Why are you lying to that kid? Uh, you know, he ain't the most beautiful and she ain't the most good. You think if I keep telling them to think positive thoughts, you, know you know what you better tell them? Say, listen, you ain't no better than nobody else. You're a sinner, needs God, and whatever you've got, the Lord give it to you. We all ought to be in hell, forgot what we deserved. You're a whole lot better off telling the truth and be honest about their situation. I think people ruin their little girls by making princesses out of all of them from the time they're four years old and they're dressing like a hussy the time they're nine and the next thing you know they're dying, wanting to be on dance moms or some wicked something or another like that and, and I'm telling you something buddy wisdom is better than mental power just, just believe in yourself my foot positive thinking ain't going to get you nowhere uh, when it comes time to leave this world amen uh, I've heard people say everybody's beautiful I say what? They ain't hardly nobody beautiful. You been to Walmart lately? <laughs> you might see one pretty person out of 500. Amen. The Lord must like ugly people. He made a lot of us, didn't he? Uh, but we're flawed. That's what's wrong with us. We're flawed. But listen, it's better than mental power. Listen, two men lived here in this country. One of them built a multi-million, billion dollar empire. Off a, off a pornographic magazine, Playboy, named Hugh Hefner. And for many, many years, old Hugh Hefner, boy, he was a king of Hollywood. And everybody thought, wow, Hef, wow, would you like to be our man? Hef got me. He was the Emmy, and everybody wanted to go to the Playboy Mansion, and everybody, all them movie stars, they thought, oh, my goodness, oh, my goodness, wouldn't that be wonderful, that lifestyle? He's got four girlfriends, and, and they're all, there's another man named Billy Sunday. And Billy Sunday had the baseball he set the record, I think it's for the uh, Chicago White Sox, one of them teams, running the bases, running barefooted. You could do it back then. And he set the record for running the bases in his bare feet. And Billy Sunday went to the side out there at the Pacific Garden Mission one time, and I got saved and started preaching. And he gave up a tremendous salary, what was tremendous back then, and quit baseball and started preaching. And he started preaching. He influenced by Mordecai Ham, who influenced Billy Graham there in Charlotte, and the rest is history. And, and Billy Sunday preached all of them. There was a time back in the 20s, long in there, Billy Sunday was the premier evangelist in America. And he'd run, he'd preach, he'd preach with his shirt tails hanging out, and his, and his sleeves was, uh, rolled up, and he'd break chairs and run back and forth across the pulpit. They said he wrote his notes in big old letters, big old box car letters like that. And somebody said, Preacher, why do you write your notes so big? He said, So I can read them when I run past the pulpit. I mean, brother, he was very animated and very, uh, I mean, and buddy, I mean, he, he preached, uh, get on the water wagon, and, uh, and he's the one that preached against the alcohol industry, and he said, I want to get America so dry, you have to prime a man before he could spit. He preached against alcohol. He said, it's of the devil. It's straight from hell. Send it all back to hell where it came from. And they hated him. Elmer Gantry, that book that they wrote, movie they made, was a mockery of the evangelist Billy Sunday. The world hated him. But they said Billy Sunday, they'd go build him big old tabernacles. And they said, that fella shook hands, put his hand in the hand of a million converts. And walked that sawdust trail. Hugh Hefner died. Billy Sunday died. Now, which one of them would you rather be right now? A man who spent his life preaching and people getting saved. Or a man that spent his money ruining the lives of young people and marriages and morals of a nation. I hope you haven't got saved. I ain't got nothing against you. I'm telling you, but he's going to have hell to pay someday, somehow. Wisdom is better 
Acts chapter 6 and verse 10 said they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which they they spoke. Paul said, my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom. Our generation of preachers needs to learn that. It's not with enticing words of man's wisdom. You hear a lot of these preachers nowadays and they sound like some kind of philosopher or some kind of uh, Ted talk, some fool, something or another like that. Or something like on a talk show, say, oh yeah, yeah, and Jesus is cool, man. It's just awesome, man. And God just loves you so much, man. It's awesome. You know, I mean, and Paul said, my preaching was not with enticing words, but in demonstration of the spirit and power. Conviction, buddy, conviction. Make you feel bad for sinning. Make you want to get your heart right. That's real preaching and wisdom. Amen. Them old preachers had that kind of wisdom. The old preachers had that wisdom. I, you heard my stories. Said years ago, there was, a, there was a, somebody back in the old days. They had they had uh, little communities where everybody in the community come to church on Saturday night and stuff, you know. And there's a chicken thief in the community. Somebody had been stealing chickens, and nobody couldn't find out who it was. So the preacher got up Saturday night. Old man of God, he prayed up. And he said, "All right." He said, "There's a chicken thief in here tonight," and he said, "In just a moment, the Lord." going to reveal to us who the chicken thief is. Everybody went, oh, oh man, God's going to tell him. He pulled out a big old rock out under the pulpit, lays out a big, look like a bowling ball. He said in just a minute, God is going to speak to me from heaven and reveal who the chicken thief is, and I shall take that rock and bust him in the head with it. Everybody went, whoa. He, he laid out there, and he's got to preaching. He got in a big way. He was running back and forth. He's screaming and hollering. He said, and now the Lord will reveal the chicken thief. And he grabbed that rock and he reared back like that and one fella back there ducked like that. <laughs> you don't get that in seminary. See, you don't read that in a book. That's wisdom. That's wisdom. Another one, I think Bob Jones, one of them guys, had, they said uh, years ago, they was coming to the little meetings. They didn't have a big high platform like this. They was down here almost eye level. Back when women wore them big old hats. Remember, the, remember saying the big, all the women wore the big hats? They thought that made you more holy or something. I ain't got nothing against them. I mean, that, I mean, it looked like an umbrella, man. The whole family walked up there when it was raining. And, but you couldn't see. And uh, we had hat day one time over at the old building. I don't know if any of y'all remember it. Uh, y'all remember that? Hat day. This woman wore, yeah, she wore Coca-Cola cans. All, they was all put together and all over her head. I'm not lying. Somebody came to me and said, Brother Danny, we don't want to do it. She's got cocoa cans on her head. I said, she does, don't she? And everybody was cracking up. I mean, y'all remember that and seen that in real life, okay? But anyway, they wore them big old hats. And the preacher got up and he said, ladies, if you don't mind, so people behind you can see, would you please remove your hats while I preach? And they all took them down like that, you know, except one woman. She just sat there like, You're not going to tell me what to do. I'll leave my hat on. He said, thank you very much, ladies. I appreciate that. He said, I was preaching the other day somewhere, and I asked all the ladies to remove their hats, and all of them did, uh, except for one. Of course, of course, she was bald-headed. And that woman went. <laughs> That's smooth, man. That's smooth. That's pretty smooth. Uh, some of them old preachers had more wisdom they didn't have a lot of education, but they, they could outsmart you. You know what I'm saying? That's smooth. Better than mental power. Better than mental power. Now, years ago, there's a lady, and I'll tell you this, and I'm done. A young woman wanted to be a missionary to Mexico really bad. She had a terrible burden for the Mexican people, Spanish people in Mexico. And, and she wanted to go, and her heart was just on fire. She couldn't talk. She couldn't quote Scripture without putting... The, the Spanish, Mexican people in there. She quote like, though I speak with the tongues of men and angels and have not love for the Mexican people, I am become a sound and brass and things like that. It, it's all, everywhere she went, everything she did, everything, uh, like, like somebody getting obsessed over a bus ministry and saying, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it, I'm going to do it. And like that, she was just obsessed with winning those Mexicans of the Lord. Well, she went, and she won many of them to the Lord. She really did. People thought she's crazy. Give up everything here in this country. Give up a good job, house, everything. I go to Mexico and talk to people all the time. And she went, and she won a lot of them to the Lord, and it wasn't long until she got really sick. And she's dying. 
And all of her converts come in and gathered around her bed. And they said, she ain't got long. And she said, don't bring no flowers. I want no flowers. Bring New Testaments and Bibles. And they all went out and got all the New Testaments and Bibles they could buy everywhere and find everywhere and stacked them around her, her casket when she died. And they took them Bibles, her converts took them Bibles and put them out all over town to help win more people to the Lord. That woman had wisdom. That's what you do with your life, people. That's what you do with your life. You say, how do you know that? He that winneth souls is wise. You know why? I, I said something one time about uh, on Mother's Day, and I said, I love my mother, but the Lord's done for more for me than my mother. And somebody wrote an awful email and said, how could you possibly say that? The Lord ain't done enough for you for my than your mother. He sure has. I mean, my mother loved me, but Jesus died for me to keep me out of hell. Jesus done more for you than your mother or daddy or everybody else put together. People say, how could you waste your life trying to help people that don't even want to hear it? No way. You ain't wasting it. You ain't wasting it. Every door you knock on, helping that guy this morning, every track you give out, every time you go on a bus, every time you help a bus kid teach a Sunday school class, sing a song, you are not wasting your time. That's wisdom. Wisdom is better than middle power. Let's stand with our heads bowed. I'm done. Let's all bow our heads in prayer. Miss Desi, come and play something softly just a minute. We're going to pray and let you go tonight. Maybe you just say, Lord, help me get wisdom, Lord. Help me get wisdom. Father, I pray right now in Jesus' name, Holy Spirit, that you'd give every one of us wisdom. Wisdom is the principal thing. Help us to get it. We do pray. We love you tonight. We pray the Holy Ghost come down and do a great and mighty work in every heart here this evening. I pray for every young person here tonight that you'd give them the wisdom to know what to do with their life. The decisions they got to make. God, help them not to make stupid decisions. Help them to use wisdom that comes from the Holy Ghost. Please, Lord, help them, Lord. I pray, God, that you'd bless mamas and daddies here tonight. Use wisdom on where to work, where to live, all the things they gotta, they got to choose. God, please, help us to make decisions with your glory in mind, putting you first in everything. Lord, bless everybody this week. Give them a safe week. Bring us all back here Wednesday night for a great time. We'll thank you for it and we love you. In Jesus' name we pray and for his sake. Amen.